Hey everyone, thank you so much for taking the time to join our webinar today, where we're going to provide you some useful insights about data-driven direct mail. Um, so hopefully you'll find it, find it useful and super excited to have you all here. Before we kick things off and get started, I just want to cover some quick housekeeping items. On the right side of your screen, there is a Q&A chat panel. Um, please feel free to ask any questions in there and we will answer them at the end. Um, you can also participate in our conversations today by answering the poll questions that you'll see pop up in the upper left-hand corner. Um, and we'll be sending a copy of the recording to all ten attendees, so look out for that email tomorrow. Um, so let's kick things off. Um, first of all, let's take some time to introduce ourselves. Um, Katie, why don't you go ahead? Thanks. Um, so yeah, I'm Katie Entrader. I am VP of Business Development here at Tower Data. Um, I've been at the company now for seven and a half years, and I'm in or I'm out of the Chicago office. Awesome. So great to have you here. And I am Mark Menard. So I'm the head of product marketing at Lob, and we'll be teaming up with Katie to kind of answer any questions as we go through this journey. Um, so the first section of this webinar is focused on the evolving role of direct mail. But before we get started into the content, let's go ahead and kick off the poll itself. How many of you are currently using direct mail in your marketing campaigns? Um, so it actually looks like quite a bit. Text copy in the direct mail piece. Awesome. So it looks like a good portion of you are doing it. So about 68% so far are actually utilizing direct mail, which is awesome. And about 30% of it not yet. So hopefully we'll be able to provide you some tactics for those that aren't using it and some new tactics for those that are. Um, so we'll go ahead and kick things off. So for the first question we have, we see digital ads everywhere, but what limitations or challenges are marketers running into in this channel? So I think, um, you know, the biggest challenge is that digital channels are getting saturated, whereas, you know, sending an email costs virtually nothing for companies. So they tend to send a lot of them. Um, but there's definitely been a big resurgence with a lot of my clients, especially my e-commerce and retail clients, um, going back towards direct mail. Um, and I think what people are finding is that their email inboxes are incredibly cluttered, but their physical mailboxes aren't. Um, so I think a lot of these companies are starting to run direct mail campaigns now in parallel with their kind of existing digital marketing campaigns. Yeah, and, and just to add that, so the, the reality is that direct mail is the one marketing channel where you can get that person's undivided attention. They're walking to the mailbox, they're actually going through their mail pieces, and they're looking at each one of those individually, which you will rarely find in any of the other channels itself. And when you couple this with the right data, you can place a very relevant, personalized offer that's targeted at that person and get it in front of them when they're not focused on anything else. And there's just not any other marketing channels out there that can do that. Um, for the next question. Yeah, so um, can direct mail really provide the same level of performance as digital channels? So this is actually a great question. Um, and the reality is that direct mail consistently outperforms email and that thought process itself is kind of a novelty today. Um, that's why most consumers actually report both liking and taking the time to read their direct mail. Um, and a fun fact that I do have is that up to 90% of direct mail gets opened compared to only 20 to 30% of emails. Um, and per USPS, 98% of people check their mail daily and spend 30 minutes of time with their physical mail. Um, people like the ability to have that offer in it, to be able to review it, to put it aside and come back to it whenever is necessary. That's a pretty crazy stat. 98% of people check their mail daily. It's uh, funny because, yeah, a lot of people actually don't think of direct mail in that per that that way, right? It's usually just mail in my in my mailbox, and they don't think of like the way that they go and and religiously go and check it. Yeah, absolutely. So, why do you think we aren't seeing more direct mail usage? For me, I think I think it's historically the mindset for direct mail is that it has been used primarily for spray and pray acquisition campaigns, right? People are buying and renting lists and just sending it out to an entire area code, 
Um, and honestly, people think about the click and save coupons that come in packages and stuff. Add to that that typically direct mail from a marketer's thought process is that it's resource heavy to execute to get the creative built. Um, it takes it's time consuming to buy the list or to create the actual list itself and to send it over to a print partner. And on top of that, it's expensive, right? Typically, direct mails are expensive to execute. And the lack of ROI. I think a lot of marketers are used to the digital aspect of having the data under one roof, being able to log into a marketing automation system, check it, and direct mail, at least in the way that it's seen in the market today, is just not one of those systems. It sits in the silo. Yeah, agreed. And I think some companies feel hesitant due to, like you mentioned, the cost or their assumption of cost and then you know the ability to personalize. Um, but I really think that it's a lost opportunity in the world that we're living in right now with this pandemic. You know, more people are working from home than ever before and will continue to do so. Um, and because they're working for ho from home, their online browsing behavior and habits have changed dra dramatically. So like you said, they're checking their mailbox probably even more than they were before, if that's even possible. Um, and, and they're browsing now from home without, you know, a boss over their shoulder checking to see what they're doing. So so you are online a little bit more than you ever were before. So Yeah, I mean, totally. I mean, people are looking forward to that walk to the mailbox just to get out of the house and away from the computer for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Zoom fatigue is a real thing. That's that's the reality of it. And direct mail actually provides that marketing channel where it gives them the opportunity to kind of cut away. Absolutely. Um, so is this changing? Will we see new use cases for direct mail moving forward? So I think... You know, now with the way that customer databases are built, um, a brand is able to see sort of a full picture of their customer's digital behavior and tie it back to their offline behavior. Um, and you can speak to this better than I can, but I know that Lob, even in their direct mail pieces, provides sort of coupon codes um, that can specifically tie that conversion back to the individual and decipher whether it was the offline or online communication um, that did eventually bring them back. And, and you're 100% right. So the direct mail landscape is, is definitely changing for sure. And with technology giving marketers the ability to execute it as easily as email. Um, and then you add in like the per mail piece tracking, right? As it goes through the postal system and as it gets delivered into the mailbox and then Things like QR codes and the ability to integrate it with the tech stack, including, you know, marketing automation systems, your CRM, your CDPs. Um, and then the creative use cases for direct mail are also changing. People are understanding that if I can execute as easy email, I can get a lot creative of how I'm um, utilizing it. We've actually seen a lot of our clients have been do it for things like fraud, fraud prevention. You know, some companies are seeing, you know, fraudulent ad, ads placed and they want to double check that that's a real business. So they'll send a direct mail piece to the address, give them a confirmation code that they have to then go in and enter back in on, on the platform itself. So that's an interesting one. So smarter retention and remarketing with direct mail. So this is the, the second half of, of the actual webinar itself. And I believe with this, we actually have a polling question. So how many of you are currently using direct mail for retargeting or retention campaigns? Let me kick off the poll. So you should see that in your upper left hand corner. So it looks like not many, which is interesting. So it looks like we have about 67% so far that, oh, well, no, deadline. <laughs> now it's completely changing. <laughs> Definitely needed to wait for that one to come in and saturate a little bit. So it looks like actually most of you are 61% are using direct mail. Um, for retention campaigns. So, uh, we're starting to even out. So 58% about are using it for um, retention campaigns, which is actually extremely, extremely interesting. So Mark, why do you think it's important to use direct mail for retargeting? Um, so to one of the points that you made earlier, digital advertising is so easy to execute that it has become completely saturated channel. Um, and customers tend to tune it out at this point, right? We're all at home, we're in front of our computers. And to be honest, like, it sometimes almost feels a little creepy. Like how many times have you gone to a website and then noticed across the rest of your social channels and the rest of the sites that you go to, you're being followed by a retargeting ad. And you tend to tune that out a little bit. Um, direct mail, which is another fun stat, has 13 times or 130% higher response rate than email. And that triples if the recipient has had some sort of interaction with your brand in the past. Um, so a lot of companies are seeing super success with 
you know, reactivating dorm dormant customers, communicating with email customers that may be unsubscribed. Um, think about turning browsers into purchase. So you have information from somebody that's been to your website, somebody that's added something to the cart but may have not completed the purchase. Um, direct mail is a great use case of that. Um, part of win back campaigns, um, part of you know, a customer that may have purchased and you want to get them to sign up for a subscription. Um, and then also part of lifecycle marketing campaigns. A lot of our clients are using direct mail as a part of an overarching campaign in which they will send a direct mail piece and then send an email following up, letting them know, hey, there's a great offer in your mailbox. So go ahead and, and check that out. Um, also, because direct mail is something physical that you can hold on to and you can put aside, you can come back to it. You don't feel like it's going to haunt you across your entire internet life. 76% um, of consumers consider it to be a trustworthy channel when making purchase decisions. They understand that they have that physical piece of mail into it and then they can make a buying decision. If not today, but they can come back to it. Yeah, it's definitely a, a less invasive version of getting in front of their, um, you know, getting fr in front of them and, and staying top of mind when they are ready to make that purchase. So what are the common hurdles that prevent companies from implementing these type of campaigns? So, you know, I think the, the largest hurdle is that most sites are just collecting your email address in order to receive their newsletters or their offers. Um, and so there are a lot of, you know, large data gaps when it comes to the name and postal data. Um, and I think this can really prevent some companies from fully leveraging direct mail in their lifecycle campaigns. Um, and same with anonymous web browsers, they can leave a lot of intent and affinity information, but they're not clearly identifying themselves. Um, so I think that sort of leaves a big gap as well. Yeah. And I would completely agree with that. And then I think another just is just the mental hurdle of it being again, resource heavy, time consuming and expensive just to get done. Um, the lack of knowledge and, and understanding that technology exists just like you would execute an email or a social campaign to be able to support that and make it a very viable channel. Um, you know, as you mentioned, the pandemic has pushed digital channels to their actual breaking point. It's so saturated and marketers are looking for different ways to differentiate themselves across other brands um, and other things that people are seeing on a regular basis. Many of our client, clients came to us or came to look at direct mail as a viable channel, but they also needed something to execute faster on a better rate on a, on a regular basis and less expensive, right? Environments were changing. They need to be able to act, to act immediately. And direct mail was one of those channels and the technology to support it was something they were looking for. So where I, can I get my missing address data? So um, this is actually one of the main services that Tower Data has been providing now for a long time. And that's the ability to append your name and postal data directly to an existing email um, address or address list. Um, we, we also additionally have a solution where we can match names and postals to those who anonymously, anonymously browse the site but don't convert as well. Um, and just to follow up on that, so definitely a shameless plug for Tower Data as it is a perfect solution to pair with a uh, lot for your direct mail needs. Guilty, yeah. <laughs> Pretty shameless, sorry. Uh, as, as we get into the third section of this webinar, the power of personalization, which I think is probably one of the most valuable things for direct mail. Um, let's go ahead and kick it off. Um, I believe that we do have a poll question. So to what extent do you personalize your direct mail campaigns? And it looks like we're at about 71%. Awesome. Yeah, so about 71% of you guys are utilizing personalization within your campaigns, which is fantastic. Um, so on that front, how should companies think about personalization in the direct mail channel? So, you know, just like digital or email campaigns, direct mail can be personalized for, you know, greater impact. So you could feature specific products based on a customer's, you know, online browsing behavior, um, or you could even utilize basic demographic data to put relevant content or images um, into the piece. You know, even something as simple as, um, you know, 
age range and putting, you know, the same person in an outfit, but the model is age specific to, you know, to you and your demographic is going to make a huge impact. Yeah. So, and, and on that front, because you actually have the data at your fingertips and the ability to integrate it directly with your other marketing automation platforms or whatever it might be, um, you can have a, a deeper insight into your customer and actually integrate direct mail as part of those campaigns at a certain touch point in the campaign of the lifecycle marketing. Um, think about um, things like, you know, replacement purchases or related products and services that you want to highlight for that customer based on their purchase history. Um, and then imagery copy and special offer tailored to the individuals and their specific milestones allow you for that deep personalization that not only brings the direct mail piece to life, but it actually resonates with the customer rather than just being a random piece of mail that they get. So does Lob run direct mail experiments and how do you guys help your customers to optimize content? This is a question that we get quite a bit and, and a very good one. Um, so the ease of personalization and the ability to execute much faster definitely represents an opportunity for continuous uh, experimentation. One of the things that we've seen a lot of our clients go is that they've now moved to an always on experimentation mindset, right? Think about a, B testing, just one piece versus another piece, and then multivariate. Um, effective direct mail marketers test obsessively. Um, and what this has done is that they test different segments, different messaging, different images, different coloring, different form factors, different special offers, and of course, timing of all of the actual messages themselves. This has driven a deeper relationship with the marketer and their data analytics team. They're looking at things upstream that we may not have been thinking about today, but because you have technology and understand like the whole course of the actual direct mail piece going out, it gives you the ability to step back and look at the details across every piece and the performance metrics. Um, the analytics teams then come in and say, hey, okay, I know this is working, let's test that, let's test this. A lot of our clients are testing four or five different form factors, messaging, copy, all of that stuff at one point. And the analytics team is working on this performance metrics to give them insight into like what test next. Great. So lastly is, is wrapping all up and, and putting it together. Um, what would a personalized direct mail remarketing campaign look like? Yes. So um, we've got a great example. We have a mutual client, um, Puffy. They're an e-commerce mattress company. Um, and they're currently working with both of us on this remarketing initiative. So essentially the way it works is they, they've placed our pixel on their site in order to track those anonymous browsers that come and click and look around but don't actually convert. Um, so we are able to then identify the name and postal associated with those individuals, provide that back to Puffy, and then they will generate an API call over to Lob to personalize um, that direct mail retargeting piece. And you can kind of see the breakdown in this, um, this little chart here, but it's pretty cool technology. Yeah, for, for sure. And again, like I think like the, the technology is the biggest if we're going to mention anything in this, I think the technology is the biggest piece to support this, right? To become a direct mail marketer and to be successful at it, it's the speed of execution. It's, you know, slowing down the amount of resource heavy that it actually takes to execute. And then it's truly understanding who you're targeting, why you're targeting, and like, how is that personalized meet, um, message going to resonate with them? And then going back to the previous thing that we had talked about, testing, right? Spreading it across, trying different form factors, um, it's like any other marketing channel. It, it doesn't happen overnight. So you have to really focus in on the performance data and executing that with technology allows you to bring that data back in and look at it as an omni-channel experience across all of your channels and how are they influencing each other. Um, with that said, we are at the end of our time, um, but we do have some questions that have come in. So I will throw the first one your way, Katie, if you don't mind. Um, how do you decide when to send direct mail versus email? And that you, you say direct mail is more effective, but it's also more expensive. Yeah, I mean, I think um, it all comes back to, you know, budget. And, um, you know, I think once you're starting to see your open rates or click rates um, decrease, I think it's time to figure out another alternative. And so I think at that point, it's worthwhile to, 
um, to start testing out direct mail because you know now with your you know lobs technology you really are able to pinpoint exactly who it's going to make sense to contact exactly what they were interested in and really personalize it so you're not just going to be sending a ton of blanketed you know, postcards, you're going to send something specific that's really going to help these individuals convert. So um, I think, I think overall, it's, it's a, it's an internal question of when it makes the most sense. But I think it's when your, your digital channels aren't converting like they used to, then it's time to start thinking about other options. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's one of those actually forgotten channels that marketers are not utilizing enough and I think that with today's environment, we're actually going back to direct mail as something that we know will perform. But it goes back to, again, what we've talked about in the past is that historically, it's just the mindset of it being heavy to execute. Mm -hmm. But now that there's technology in there, it's a very viable channel and something that's easy to execute as email. So um, like you mentioned, I think that it, it's taking a step back and looking across all of your actual channels themselves, getting an understanding of what's performing and what's not, and then trying something different. And that's always important. Um, we have a question that came in from from Kevin. What industry slash categories perform better in direct mail than digital? I don't know if you had any insight. Um, I would imagine you could probably speak better to this. I know it makes um, you know a lot of sense for e-commerce and retail companies. It's just a natural addition to what yeah. they're already doing. But I'm sure that you know you guys work with a variety of of verticals and could speak to it a little bit better. Well, sure. So uh, um, like you mentioned, e-commerce, um, even storefront companies that are trying to get people back into store, especially during this time during the pandemic. And then the other side of that is financial services, um, credit card companies. Um, they've actually seen a lot of success in sending out direct mail pieces, especially with the implementation of technology. If you think about it, um, one of the big things is because you can integrate it with your systems, if you see someone's you know, credit card usage has increased, you can send them out a special offer to you know, refinance the credit card or for a personal loan or something. So we've seen a lot of our clients actually use it in that way. Um, telecom companies like the Verizons of the world are also heavily using direct mail for success. Um, healthcare uses direct mail, not, on, not so much on the marketing side as much, but for, which a lot of people don't think about it, for operational use cases sending out the actual statements on a regular basis, making sure that they're in the mailbox. Um, healthcare is, is a big industry that we see quite a bit. Um, another question is sending mail to everybody who bounces from our site sounds expensive. How should we narrow the scope of these campaigns? Yeah, so what's cool about this um, anonymous web browsing technology is we actually have the ability to bring in your existing email database and we can actually suppress against those individuals. So we can make sure that we're not gonna match somebody that has already you know, been a customer um, or a prospect of yours in the past. Um, and you know, additionally, if somebody were to click, look around and eventually convert, you can also put um, some technology in place to make sure that if they do end up converting, um, that it again suppresses those individuals and we won't then return those names and postals as matches. So there are ways to prevent sort of duplication of efforts. Um, we really want it to just be those kind of um, anonymous browsers that you've not previously you know, communicated with. Yeah, and, and at that point, it's the data, right? Which is absolutely huge. Just it's like understanding exactly what your target audience is, what your ideal customer looks like, and then being able to, to execute a campaign towards them. Um, another question that came in is, what's the best cadence of email to direct mail in an omni-channel platform? Um, and I can, I can kind of kick this one off. This is all about testing, right? Um, I think that uh, you have to understand exactly what your response rate is to emails and what makes sense. Like, how do you balance that out? What we've seen a lot of our clients do is actually they will they will utilize email and direct mail in the same cadence from a perspective of I'm going to send you a direct mail piece and then I'm going to send you an email you know three days after that direct mail piece reaches your your mailbox so that I I know to to let you know that hey there's a piece in your mailbox I think it's a great special offer that you want to take advantage of um, but every business is different so it comes back down to just understanding the performance data at your fingertips and then making the right decisions on what you're seeing the, the mix of that is. Um, other question is, what is your best advice on nuances you found for optimizing a postcard direct mail campaign? I don't know if you had any insight into that one. 
Um, I think you guys could probably speak more to that just with your experience. Okay. With I just didn't want to steal the state. Yeah. 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 yeah, you guys are I'm trying to share the love. Um, the, honestly, the best the best advice that I can possibly give is to, I hate to, to sound like a broken record, but is, is testing. So you have to understand the different form factors in the actual postcard, right? And the ability to personalize um, is huge because different colors that you can do, the different copy, um, the different special offers, the way that you're actually tracking that between a QR code, a special URL, a promotional code, whatever it might be, um, you have to find what the best balance is and figure out exactly what you're getting the best you know, you know, reaction to. Um, so I think it's importantly, it's so important to test. Start with one, don't go overboard. Try you know, an A-B test you know, with different copy, different offers, and then go from there and start to peel back the layers as you start to see fit. Um, but there's, there's not a single magic bullet with direct mail. There's also not a single ballot, bold magic bullet with any digital marketing either, right? Like you're constantly testing everything when it comes to digital side and the, the same um, should be said for direct mail as well. How does LOB enable integration between digital and direct mail campaigns? So this is something that, that I had addressed earlier in the webinar, but we, uh, the, the big value of LOB within this, for this question is, that we are an API based product, right? So um, as creative as you can get in adding in direct mail to any of your workflows is anything that we can actually support. So one of the big products that, to give an example, um, marketing automation, so the Marketos, the Brazes, the Salesforce marketing clouds, you can integrate Lob directly within your campaign workflow and just set it up as a different tile and then set the amount of you know, automation that you want or the days that you wanna send out the campaign and because uh, we work with HTML templates, you can also set your merge variables. Um, and then if you, for instance, are a Shopify front store and you want the merge variable to be the customer's name and the, the address that they've entered, all of that then flows directly within your marketing automation system. And then as soon as the customer has a certain action on your website, that campaign's automatically triggered. Um, the big value of that is that when you go back in to look at the performance of the campaign, you have that aligned against the performance of the email, the performance of your, of your actual social channel that you may have launched a campaign on, and then the performance of direct mail. So you have a single spot where you can actually go um, and, and review all aspects of the entire campaign under one umbrella, which is a huge value for, for a lot of customers. And then Mark, I thought it'd be good to bring up um, one of the questions. So how do I set up an integration like the one that was described today? Like how long does it take to get up and running with us? Um, so the way that that works is you would reach out to Tower Data. We would get you set up with that test pixel. Um, you'd place that sort of JavaScript um, snippet of code on your site and we'd run a test for about a week or so, see what the overlap was. If everything looked good, um, we would get you up and running, um, get that data back to you, whether it's in sort of a batch method or an API. Um, and then you could set up that API communication right back to LOB and you could get those direct mail pieces personalized and ready to be triggered as soon as somebody comes to the site. Yeah, which is absolutely huge. Um, and the implementation of the technology is 90% of the battle. Um, and that varies, right? It's, it can be incredibly simple depending on the use case. And then it can be, you know, customized and, and take a little bit of time depending on, you know, dev help and everything else. Um, one last question that I have is how do we identify which segments will be receptive to direct mail? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know that there's a perfect science, right? Um, but I think it's a matter of understanding exactly who that person is, whether it's behind an email, it's behind a postcard. Um, I, I think it all goes back to personalization, just truly putting the proper message, the proper image, the proper content in front of them at the right time in the right place. Um, you know, I think if they've come to your site, there's brand recognition, the likelihood of them, you know, converting when they did receive some sort of discount or offer through a direct mail piece seems to me like it'd be pretty strong. Yeah. And so I completely agree with you. And I think that this comes back into that layer of that level of technology plays in this and understanding the actual data itself. Right. And then breaking down the segmentation of looking what your customers are responding to. What content are they, you know, um, reacting and engaging with? 
And then the age demographic too. All of the aspects that you're looking at your customer even to execute a regular campaign can now be done on a direct mail campaign as well. And because there's technology, camp, direct mail is now just an additional channel. It's not, um, you know, the, the, the same old mindset that we have talked about of it being, you know, super expensive and, you know, hard to execute and sits in its own silo. It is just now a tool in your toolkit when you come to be, uh, being a marketer, which I think is absolutely huge. Um, with that said, I'm going to close things out. Katie, thank you so much. This was fantastic. Great conversation. Yes, this was wonderful. Thank you. Um, if we missed any questions, um, you will have our contact information in the follow-up. Um, we would love to chat with you, but hopefully this was insightful and helpful. I thought it was great.